we read in sacred scriptures, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Let us pray. God of endless ages, through disobedience to your law, we fell from grace and death entered the world. But through the obedience and resurrection of your Son, you revealed to us a new life. You granted Abraham, our father in faith, a burial place in the promised land. You prompted Joseph of Arimathea to offer his own tomb for the burial of the Lord. In a spirit of repentance, we earnestly ask you to look upon this grave and bless it so that while we commit to the earth the remains of your servant Barbara, her soul may be taken into paradise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our sister Barbara from this life to himself, we commit her ashes to the, to the earth, for we are dust and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Dear friends, our Lord comes to raise the dead and comforts us with the solace of his love. Let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, creator of the earth, to which Barbara now returns. In baptism you called her to eternal life to praise your Father forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Son of God, you raise up the just and clothe them with the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Crucified Lord, you protect the soul of Barbara by the power of your cross. And on the day of your coming, you will show mercy to all the faithful departed. Lord, have mercy. Judge of the living and the dead, at your voice the tombs will open and all the just who sleep in your peace will rise and sing the glory of God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. All praise to you, Jesus, our Savior. Death is in your hands and all the living depend on you alone. Lord have mercy. My sisters and brothers, with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray as Jesus Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer in sadness for your servant Barbara. Deliver her soul from death. Number her among your saints, and clothe her with the robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless
gather round beneath this humble tree, extending, bending down to cover us, embrace us, much like you've done your life through. Come, come let us grab each other's hand and heart and form a loving circle around you. With tears and smile, with memories old and new, in laughter and song, let us bring you home to your eternal reside, beside the one who brought you forth with life, extending, descending, down to us, to us one and all. Come, come let us bring you home. Be together again, side by side, in spirit, in soul. And reconnect the God beautiful bonds of love solidly through the endless time of life hereafter. Let us lay you down and adorn your silken bed with laurel roses, lilies, and carnations. Sing and vow sweets for the sweetest of you in joyous memory. Let, us, let the fondness of the thoughts lift our heavy hearts and dispel the sadness. Come, come, let us bring you home and lay you down. And let us take you wherever we roam. Love you, Barb. Beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, next, Kelly will uh, give some last remarks. everyone for being with us today to celebrate the life of our mother Barbara. There's a lot of life lived between when you're born and when you turn 44. <laughs> Mom was 44 when I was born and I often find myself wondering who she was before me. I wonder who she was as a young child, as a teenager, and especially as a young mom. I thought about this a lot more than I should probably admit throughout my life, but sitting by her bedside for the few days before she left us, it was top of mind. In my life, she was a mom who was strict, but to my advantage was also very tired and had given up on enforcing curfews by the time I was home. <laughs> Not to my advantage, that meant always waking up at 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday to go to church, no matter how late I was out. Some phrases like, rise and shine, my little chickadee, I'm sure cross generations in our family and make us all cringe to this day. <laughs> Despite my attitude, she sacrificed a lot to ensure we had everything we wanted. My favorite memories are going back to school shopping and how involved she was in helping pick, picking out my outfits and making dad watch my fashion shows when we got home. <laughs> And I also will always have a clear picture of her in my mind with a plastic shopping bag over her head while dyeing her hair, one of the varied reds we all know and love. <laughs> in the days following her death, hearing stories I'd never heard from family and friends, who mom was before me became a little clearer. Mom was a woman with nine lives. lived and breathed for her family and we each got to experience a different version of the best of her. Barbara as a child and a young woman inherited her independence from her mother Ruth and had a special connection with her siblings. She had this sort of matriarchal foresight. Uncle Brian shared a story with me um, where he and mom and Robin were out to eat just after they had all moved to Miami. Mom gave Brian the money for the check and said, you need to learn how to figure out how to pay the bill. Brian thought it was strange at the time, but looking back now, it was because she knew the lessons a young man needed to learn. She loved supporting her younger siblings as they grew up, whether it was a baby doll for her sisters, helping make, make bridesmaids dresses for Ellen, or spending time with Danielle in the hospital when she was born to help Vicki and John. She would never hesitate to take people in or help find them jobs. In her mind, everything would just take five minutes. 
Barbara as a young mother influenced Robin and her cousins. I've heard so many stories about Girl Scout trips that Mom and Aunt Sandy would chaperone and the questionable decision to get a nice photo of a 15 or was it 20 feet? I don't know. Changes depending on who tells it. Long crocodile. Alligator. Alligator. <laughs> Filed that in with a skydiving story under adventurous and having a need for an adrenaline rush. While mom had an adventurous and a dramatic side, she also had a way of making everyone feel important when they were with her. Mom once told me a story of how she brought Donna as a baby to church with her one Sunday in a cute little yellow dress. She often took Kathy and Robin shopping. And then there was a time she had Kenny with her as a toddler in a grocery store and he decided to lay down and have a tantrum in the middle of the aisle. <laughs> as you would expect, mom walked right around him and continued on with her shopping and that stopped him immediately. <laughs> She went on to say how she enjoyed being with her cousins and their children and how Robin, having grown up during the first part of her life with them, was something she was forever thankful for. Mom, as an older mother, gave Chris and I the advantage of being millennials, raised the same as Gen Xers. So we had a wide breadth of knowledge of old time sayings like, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. <laughs> and we also quickly developed skills like how to teach your parents to use a computer. Mom was a little less adventurous by the time Chris and I came around, but she still had a flair for drama. When Chris was in fourth grade, there was an essay contest at St. Ambrose about fire prevention. His first line was, smoke detectors detect smoke. <laughs> and mom said, no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> they spent hours redrafting an exciting intro paragraph and an essay that included the sounds, smells, and fear of a fire. Mom was a good writer and knew how to use drama to capture her audience. Chris won the contest for that essay, and I would go on to get mom's same instruction and win the same award four years later. <laughs> Barbara, as a grandmother, was in her prime. She lived every day for her grandchildren. Annalise and Sana have shared such special memories of growing up with grandma. Mom loved to get animals for them. <laughs> and that's how she ended up with her dog, Tad, who originally was the girl's dog. <laughs> There were also bunnies and guinea pigs. And at one point she got a betta fish for them and darn if that fish didn't swim to the surface every time she talked to it like it, like it loved her and it lived for five years. And even though life and distance kept us from spending the quality time together with my kids that I wish we could have in the last few years, she influenced all her grandchildren and thanks to pictures and memories shared with me, I see her face in my daughter every day. <laughs> Although I grieve for the mom I knew, and sometimes for the Barbara I never knew, I'm thankful for the strength and family that she instilled in all of us. Mom always kept her family as our number one priority, no matter the time or distance between us. And I know there's so much history and love woven into the little snapshots of her life that have been shared over the last few weeks. So I hope with the sadness of her loss, we can take away some of that strength and continue sharing her me her memory together and following in her footsteps the importance of family. Thank you. Good job. Nice has carnations, so if anybody would like to take one. And feel free if anybody has anything to share, a memory. Mm -hmm. Hey, I wanted to say a little something. Uh, when uh, Kelly first she told me, she said, think of something, you know, a story or whatever about your sister that you, we can do at this gravesite. And I really couldn't think of anything at all. But uh, They were like surrogate parents to, to yeah. us. And you know, I just started thinking about the most mundane little things 
one time I was about 10 and Barbara, she goes, what's with your hair? She says, it looks like you have dandruff. She goes, what'd you wash your hair with? I said, a whole bar of soap. <laughs> so she goes to the store, comes back, brings me the shampoo. But there was like a hundred little things like that that these guys did for us as kids. Uh, I mean, I'll never forgive her for dressing me like a woman or uh, the Beauty and the Beast thing. You know? it took me five years to get over that. But uh, I mean, I took her car to get my driver's license. You know, it was just a million different things. Uh, and of course, we had to repay her because every time she moved to a new apartment, she had a great idea about decorating. <laughs> so Bob and I would be in the car. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can't believe she's gone. I, I think about, you know, like calling her or whatever, and same way with mom. But maybe that's the impact that they had on our lives. They don't feel like they're gone. Yeah. But she was she was great, and, and uh, thank you for everything. You too, Buddha. Thanks, you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? The only thing I could say, I know I knew her longer than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and when we lived in New York, and I was a little guy, maybe about five, six years old. In them days, you, you could go out and play without getting shot. <laughs> but there was some rough kids, but they would never mess with me. <clears throat> Barbara would kick. <laughs> she was tough. She was. Yeah. She was a good sister. She loved you so much. Thanks so much. Hi, Alan. Nick, 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 Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lived with Barb after high school for like a year and a half, and we got really close.